Thank you very much. It, it is an honor to speak to you all today. Um, all of that is true. My background tends to be on the philosophical side about uh, data and language and meaning, uh, but applying it in practical aspects for, uh, for stream processing, data science, and um, challenges of modern uh, data engineering. So I am the creator of an open source library called Quine. It is just released and uh, it, you can find it at quine.io, um, but it is a free open source library. Um, and that's the subject of the talk today is we wanna introduce you to it um, and hopefully help you get started using it and see some of the game changing benefits that can come to play in your data pipelines and the machine learning projects that they drive. So I'm the creator of Quine initially. Uh, it is built and supported by the team at that thought. Um, and the talk today is really gonna be focused on what Quine is, how it works and what kind of new capabilities we get from it. I'll point you to a demo, maybe do a live one if we have time. Uh, and we'll close by talking about where it fits in in the modern uh, machine learning and, and data science pipelines. So the, let's start here with this question, what is Quine? Um, and for us and our purposes, Quine is a streaming graph. That's what we're going to talk about today, but that is not the only thing that that word means. So in computer science, a Quine might also refer to a program that outputs its own source code. And the name Quine actually comes from a 20th century philosopher, like we were hinting at earlier on. He was a logician, did a lot of very foundational work that led to the modern uh, the modern era of computers working in deep logic and applying lo the logic that we use to interpret data. So kind of a forerunner to a lot of the modern work that happens now. Our system, Quine the Streaming Graph, is named after uh, Quine the Logician in the same way that a computer program that outputs its own source code is named after that, uh, that same philosopher and logician. But the problem that we seek to address with Quine the Streaming Graph is really about how to take data and turn it into business value. And that problem is usually a, a streaming data problem. Data comes in in a high volume. We need to interpret it, hopefully as fast as possible. But it's, that's really the centerpiece of the question, is how do you interpret that streaming data? Um, if we were to write out some of the requirements of that, we want it to handle high volumes of data, have really low latency requirements, deal with the fact that we are working on limited uh, machines that have some fixed amount of RAM, so we can't do necessarily all the fun things uh, that we wish we could do, um, or we need more complex systems to handle them. It usually forces us to limit how data gets joined together into the uh, saying we can join it if it arrives within certain time windows. It requires a lot of expertise to typically turn the data processing and data storage systems like a database, turn them inside out so that data pipelines can be built by serious experts who basically have to recreate a database in a microservice architecture. Um, and they have to walk through all sorts of cap theorem trade-offs and deal with distributed transactions and the order dependent nature of their processing. And then have to go back and confront this question of how do I replay my data uh, so that I can debug something or produce a report from last week? You know, these are just the beginning of the kind of requirements we bring to a streaming data pipeline. And it's really no surprise that with all this complexity, the systems that get built to implement these requirements tend to look like something like this. Um, they end up being very messy and complicated um, and spread out all over the place. They require dozens and dozens and dozens of software engineers to build them. They're, uh, they're very tough and challenging to build and think about and implement, but they're technically possible. Um, a lot of data engineers spend their whole careers building these systems. Um, and a lot of times their machine learning pipelines are integrated into this or they feed the machine learning pipeline so that we can eventually get to the business value that we want out of there. So fantastic, heroic efforts by the data science community, the data engineering communities to build these sorts of things. Um, but if you've ever been in that space like I have, you know that, uh, yes, it's technically possible to build it, but it's only a matter of time before everything goes comes down in flames. They're very hard to build. They're very error prone. They're slow to build, slow to change, 
It's expensive to use all the different components required and hire the team of experts required to build them. Uh, it's hard to find those people. And then if they leave your team, then you're probably better off rebuilding the whole pipeline because there's so much knowledge that gets baked in implicitly to these systems um, that, that it's hard to recreate that knowledge after someone leaves the team. So the, this is the state of the art for modern data pipelines that feed a lot of machine learning systems. And unfortunately, we've kind of grown accustomed to the fact that this is just what we have to live with. Uh, well, Quine is aimed at this problem. Make it better. Make this situation better. Um, so Quine is a streaming graph interpreter that is the result of more than seven years of DARPA-funded research and development. Um, our team has been at this for a long time. And it is a fundamental new technology for streaming data pipelines and machine learning applications. It is a streaming graph. As a streaming graph, we're aiming to take all those initial requirements and change the ballgame to provide new capabilities here uh, that can still live up to the goals of high volume data processing and low computation, but do so with low RAM requirements and banish this idea of time windows that limit what you're actually able to, uh, to put together from your data streams. Wrap the database back up again so that it's easy to use, easy to scale and deploy at scale. Um, use some creativity to some of the, these cap theorem trade-offs that we have to confront um, and look at the data structure to provide the sort of transactional guarantees that we want. Handle data that comes out of order and then even do historical queries so that we can see what did the data used to be without having to build a completely separate pipeline for it all. Quine has some really big ambitions because we've been at this for a long time. And we've open sourced this code. It's freely available to you. Um, and we think it is uh, just a game changer for the streaming data pipeline, as well as a foundation for the next wave of AI. There's a whole host of graph-based artificial intelligence techniques that are just leaving the research lab now, starting to get implemented in modern data pipelines because they've got really revolutionary capabilities for what you can do with AI, especially in a streaming data system. So that's that streaming data pipeline as a platform for the next wave of graph AI is a real game changer. We look at this from the perspective of Quine as really having two parts. Take high volume data, streaming data, and use that to build, an, build a graph internally. Why a graph? Because it's so expressive. It lets us connect data to other data. So take that data, that event-driven data, and build it into a graph, and then watch that graph and turn it into data-driven events queries on that graph, find complex patterns, and immediately stream out their results. And with those results, you can feed additional systems um, uh, like cybersecurity XDR platforms or the graph AI systems, um, whether they are uh, graph structured in their AI or really just feeding into, um, uh, feeding into existing systems with the benefit of having prepared that, uh, that data through, a, through the graph. Um, uh, a number of users are using it for CDN log monitoring analysis or blockchain analysis, monitoring their infrastructure like Kubernetes systems, or taking uh, the data cleansing that has to be done ahead of uh, real data processing and feeding, that, uh, feeding clean data into these systems where we automate the cleansing using the streaming graph system itself. Because overall, what we're really looking for from this system is to take data that is a high volume stream and make it more useful, more interesting, and of higher value. So in a cybersecurity example, you can consider that data coming in at the bottom of this little pyramid that you see on the left-hand side is many different types of data streaming in at the bottom but then getting put together to become increasingly more useful representations of that data. Ultimately, we want to understand not what the low level event is about, you know, some event occurred on a system somewhere, but what does that represent? 
is a is a program accessing a file that it shouldn't have is there is that perhaps part of a stage in a cybersecurity attack being able to detect that kind of activity that is more meaningful built out of these lower level high volume things so that is the goal for a data pipeline and an ai system is taking a high amount of data and do the interpretation of it to produce a small amount of data coming out. But that small amount should be much more useful. And of course, here's the obligatory XKCD. Um, just recently, uh, you know, an XKCD uh, amusing, amusing on the fact that if you analyze data, the problem is you create even more data. And so the real goal is to reduce how much data gets through and make it more meaningful, more interpreted, and closer to what a human is actually trying to find from their data. So how does Quine work? Um, it's a novel new system. Uh, let's talk about some of the basic assumptions under the hood and why they're game changers for the operating of that system in practice, as well as the kind of results that you can achieve from it. Under the hood, Quine is built uh, on a graph data model. And there's a temptation to think of graph data as something different and something separate. Uh, and that's really not the case at all. Graph is a superset of other kinds of data, like tabular data or tree structured data. And so what you can express in a graph is all the same things that you could express in a JSON structured format, that, which is tree structured or tabular data like your CSV files or your relational databases, that structure of data fits perfectly into a graph. And when you fit it into a graph, it gives you some real superpowers as capabilities because the graph really is the master abstraction for all these data structures that we work with. The, the graph itself as a data model is exactly analogous to the way we speak in language. Um, where that subject predicate object pattern that shows up in natural human language translates directly into a node edge node pattern, like what you see in a graph. And so that direct uh, translation means that in the graph, we can express literally anything that you could say out loud. And you can express it in a way that gives you the capability to compute over top of it. And this is where Quine's second innovation really comes into play. We've taken the graph data model that is pretty common among graph databases, but what's different about Quine is we have paired it with a graph computational model. Under the hood, Quine is backed by an actor system. It's a very old idea from the 1970s uh, that, that computation happens in lots of small little uh, scenarios, like single threaded use cases, where an actor has one thread, encapsulates some state, and communicates with everything else, like other actors or the outside world, exclusively by message passing. So you send a message from one actor to another. That gives us this very robust and powerful capability of asynchronous computation that can be distributed across any number of machines, can operate very quickly, very efficiently, and when we pair that together, the graph model for the data and for computation, we can have nodes themselves take special action. So implementing something like a reinforcement learning system uh, on, on Quine is a very natural sort of an application um, because that reinforcement of, uh, of pathways turns into message sending across actors in a system that can strengthen and weaken other connections. Uh, and turn the nodes in a graph into something like neurons in a brain. Under the hood, the system becomes very fast because of how it stores data. Every node in the graph, since it is its own little atomic CPU, can do its own computation, it calculates the changes to its state and stores them on disk using an append-only log. This is a strategy known as event sourcing. Uh, it means changes to the graph uh, happen in very tiny little units and are very efficient. And under the hood, we end up with a linear history for that particular node. Because we can write those very quickly to disk, um, the whole system overall can uh, just achieve remarkable levels of performance. 
So where a typical graph database might be in the low thousands of computations per second, Quine has been able to achieve more than a million events per second in streaming data pipelines. So it's, uh, it's a game changer on the order of several orders of magnitude here. And the data storage technology itself is swappable and can support many different modes of operation. Um, you can back it with Cassandra, RocksDB, or several other choices for how you actually store data on disk, either locally on the same machine running Quine or across a network to achieve um, high availability and uh, the robust uh, characteristics needed to run Quine in production. So these are not necessarily new ideas, um, these are the foundational ideas that are now put together in a, new, uh, in a new fashion to achieve a new kind of infrastructure technology. But Quine also builds on top of some of these well-established ideas um, to do something a bit different. Because if you only do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. And with Quine, our team has been working for, uh, for more than seven years to start from a different starting point cover the same fundamental space, but do it in a different way that gives us new trade-offs. And so under the hood, some of the different design assumptions behind Quine are that we're gonna work with streams and we're gonna do it in a stateful fashion, but assume infinite data. So the data will never end, it will keep coming through. We need to put it together into something we can use and store so that we can eliminate time windows. To do this Quine, kind of breaks the assumption of saying, you have to go create something in your data model to represent the incoming stream. Uh, instead, we assume that all nodes exist. Every node in the graph exists already. And all we actually need to store to disk are the history of changes to that particular node. So uh, under the hood, we create tools for working with the IDs of nodes um, and referring to them since you can't build an index of an infinite amount of data. Um, Quine has some novel capabilities like this function for ID from to get to the um, to get to the data that is streaming through very quickly uh, and and, and uh, you know with very minimal latency, sometimes as low as like eight microseconds. Um, so that's eight thousand nanoseconds for some complex graph queries. So why why make these changes? And of course, the answer is because we want new capabilities. We're tired of just the same basic trade-offs for all the existing technologies that you can pull down off the shelf. Quine is a is a new fundamental infrastructure tool with new capabilities. With the expressivity of a graph, we can find data and trigger actions by using graph queries. We've built a custom compiler into Quine to take in a Cypher query. Cypher is a graph query language that is used throughout the industry. Take that Cypher query that looks an awful lot like SQL um, and compile that into what we need to run on top of the, uh, the actor system and all the implementation of Quine internal to the system. That gives us answers to very expressive complex queries right now. But Quine also has the ability to go rewind time, to go give me an answer for the same query that I just asked right now, but give me the answer as it was a minute ago or 10 minutes ago or 10 weeks ago. Any point in the past, we can just issue the same query with a timestamp and get the answer that we would have gotten if we had run the query back at that time. So go query the past with historical queries. And lastly, Quine's most innovative new feature is what we call standing queries. You issue a query, it lives, it gets dropped into the graph and lives inside the graph. It automatically propagates through. And when there's a new match, because data keeps streaming in, when there's a new match, it instantly is matched. And that is published out to the next system or fed into a machine learning model or triggering some action or even calling back into the graph. Uh, to do some other updates or some other computation. And so with standing queries, you can even query the future of data that hasn't arrived. And as soon as it does, you'll get an answer instantly. All of this is to start eliminating some of the trade-offs that we have to do in modern data pipelines, where uh, we do not want to have to limit ourselves to joining data and interpreting it only if it happened to arrive within a certain small little time window. 
let's banish this notion of time windows completely and start interpreting data live on the fly as it comes through. When there's more time, I would love to show you a demo of this. And so I'll leave this link uh, for anybody who wants to uh, follow it. Uh, this points to a video on YouTube uh, where we've showed off some of Quine on a recent podcast. Um, would love to, uh, to invite you to go check it out at that.re slash demo. Following that link will uh, take you to a, a live demo where you can see it uh, applied to a streaming system of uh, consuming from the Ethereum blockchain. So turn blockchain analysis into just a two-click problem to detect money laundering through the, uh, through the live blockchain data. So it's very fast, very easy to do. Um, and I invite you to check out this URL uh, to see a live demo of it. And I'll close by asking this last question. So where does Quine fit into the enterprise data architecture? Um, it is meant to really fit in the streaming pipeline itself. So I think of this as being in between two Kafka streams. You plug Quine into Kafka or Kinesis or files or standard in any source of streaming data. As that data streams in, Quine builds it into a graph and streams the results of your standing query out to the next system. It's uh, very easy to gradually uh, incorporate it then into the existing data pipeline. Maybe that downstream system is your machine learning model and you need Quine to clean up the data, to watch for, for dirty, bad data and to process it and turn it into clean, nice data that is organized and aggregated and ready to feed your machine learning pipeline downstream. It can fit into that existing pipeline in just a single place, um, some new functionality or to replace just a single service. Or as it makes sense in your architecture and your system, drop Quine into multiple different places, just wherever it makes sense for your, your problem space. Um, so Quine is highly scalable, it is back pressured, and it is meant to hook into existing data pipelines very easily. This event-driven data allows us to focus on the shape of the data instead of having to build pipelines that are have to juggle this order of operations question. We'll consume from many data sources, build it together into a stateful graph, and banish this idea of time windows uh, being required to interpret data streams or join them together. With event-driven data and a focus on the shape of the data itself instead of the operations, we can then turn our focus toward data-driven events. What shapes in the data do we actually want to cause downstream events? Certain graph-structured patterns that are highly informative can be processed with a, a single query, a single standing query, and all of those results can be used to trigger actions to update external systems or call back in and update the graph model itself. Uh, on quine.io, um, you'll find more details, but our goal here is really to interpret high volume data. You can merge many sources together and take that high volume data and turn it into high value data to produce answers or trigger action immediately. So I invite you to go check out quine.io. As I said, it's free open source software. This is a fundamental new infrastructure technology, the kind that comes along only every five or 10 years or so. Um, and so after seven years of R&D, we're thrilled to share this with the world. Um, check it out on GitHub. You can read the documentation and see examples or use recipes at quine.io. Um, and we've got a Slack community where the engineers at that dot who built this system um, are standing by and happy to answer questions about how to get started, how to use it in your applications. Um, and if you're a data engineer and you're interested in these topics, uh, that dot is the company behind it and we're hiring. So if you like working in this space, uh, we'd love to talk to you further. Um, thank you very much for